Well, for a food company like Danone, uh, I would say a landscape is part of the, of the business model. As we uh, buy uh, milk, uh, we collect water from sources uh, and we supply our raw material from agriculture, from the soil, and soil is, uh, is part of the, of the landscape. So how to manage uh, the supply is how to manage, in a way, uh, the, the landscape approach. If you take the bottling uh, factories of uh, Danone, they are bottling from water sources. So the quality of water depends on uh, the, wet the, the water, uh, watershed management. If the soil is eroded, if there are many sediments, or if uh, farmers use a lot of pesticide, they can have an impact on, uh, on, our, on the water. So how do we manage the relationship with all the stakeholders around the source is absolutely key. Well, livelihoods is a very simple concept. Huh? On the one hand, you have big companies that are uh, producing emissions because they have factories, they have trucks, they do a lot of emission of CO2, and they want to reduce their footprint. On the other hand, there are ecosystems, including farming, which are capturing carbon. So when you erode the soil, the carbon goes out of the, of the ecosystem. When you destroy a forest, you cut a tree, you take out the carbon, and so you contribute negatively to the global warming. On the other hand, if we help farmers to restore their ecosystem, more organic content in the soil, more forestry, more mangrove, we are on the one hand capturing carbon, sequestrating carbon, and on the other hand, we are helping them increase their income. So the livelihoods model is how to increase the livelihoods of farmers through a carbon mechanism that will bring carbon credits to the, to the corporation that have invested in the fund. So very simply, we invest in large scale program, such uh, for example in India, uh, we have financed the plantation of 3 million fruit trees, mango trees, a mix of trees, an agroforestry project uh, with 300 villages. Those trees will grow. They will, on the one hand, bring mangoes and fruits and crops under the, and coffee under the mangoes to the farmers. And they will also produce carbon credits that we will distribute to the, to the investors. Uh, the investment is made on a 20-year time, which is very long. So we invest up front, so we take the risk. For example, in a project average, we spend 3 million euros per project. And we will get back the carbon credits year after year when the, the trees will grow. So we have now nine corporations in this fund. Danone is the initiator, but there are now eight others. They have invested, so it's not philanthropy, it's not foundation. They have invested in a mutual fund. They are ready to take the risk, investing in a smallholder program, and with the expectation to get carbon credit, but carbon credit with a high uh, social and environmental value. You cannot just plant a piece of land without taking into account the whole activities of the villages. So what we do is we develop, we design with local organization. We select very carefully a local project developer, NGOs, by the way, which are really best in class, and they are able to, um, to manage a large scale project. As a, the average size of our project are between 5,000 to 10,000 hectares. So many villages, many farmers, uh, so we have this kind of integrated approach to, uh, to, the, to the land, to the different types of income of the farmers. We propose, we co-develop scenarios with experts and the local NGOs. And then there is a, I would say, a interactive discussion with the villages, with the community, with the farmers, with each farmer to decide whether they will plant this type of mix of trees and plants and so on. What I can see is that first, the main actor is the farmer himself or herself, because in many cases, it is the lady who is leading the project. Uh, and I think that projects that succeed, succeed uh, thanks to the farmer's motivation and involvement. 
we are not doing projects for farmers. Farmers are doing projects and we support them. So this is absolutely uh, for us essential. Uh, farmers have to really take ownership of the project. Otherwise, why would they be motivated to do it? So they have to uh, understand the direct benefits, the tangible benefits they will get from this project. So this is the first uh, thing. Farmers are the key actors. The second one is the quality of the integrator. You cannot deal with 10,000 farmers. You need to partner with a local organization which is deeply rooted in the community, who understand the mindset, the culture, the, the society, the motivation of the farmers, who is uh, really able to, uh, to discuss, to listen, to understand what's going on, and, and also very well structured in a way they can process a project. And the third learning we have got is it has to be simple. In a way, we have to structure it. I would not say in, a, in an industrial matter, but in a way, not so far. It has to be replicable. If it's too complex, if it's too research thing, you will never reach scale. Uh, a company is a company. A company is not an NGO. If you want a company to make what you call CSR, which is, uh, if I understand well, outside the business, uh, companies will invest very little. So it's kind of goodwill. Uh, we, believe dif we believe that you have to embed uh, as much as possible uh, this social value creation and environmental value creation in your own business. And then it will be much stronger. CSR in, uh, depends on what we put behind the CSR wording, but if we consider CSR, CSR as nice to do. The day there is a problem in the company, let's say a business crisis or whatever, this program will be cut or abandoned. If it's part of your business model, then it will continue. So we have to encourage programs that are as much as possible rooted uh, into the, the mission of the company itself. If we want it to to be uh, really sustainable. Um, and in doing that, we transform the company. Because when Danone is uh, promoting this type of approach, it's because we believe that the world is changing and as a company, we need to change. And in doing this type of program, Danone managers are also changing their mindset. When they are exposed to smallholders working with NGOs, of course, they have to change their mindset they bring to the NGO and they learn from the NGO. So it's a, what we call co-creation process.